This is the Longer LK5 Pro. And if you've seen a review from six months to a year ago, this, you can think of it as the V2 of it. It really is a much better printer now and has improved a lot of the issues that several reviewers found. With this new dual fan hot end and several other little tweaks they put on this printer, it really is a much better printer than it used to be. And a lot of the little issues that reviewers had with this printer have now been fixed. So it really is a much better printer than it used to be. So it's hard to even consider this the same printer that people were reviewing six months to a year ago. But we'll cover those as they come up. First, let's go through the specs to see if this is the right printer for you. Now keep in mind when we're going over this printer that it's only a $350 printer. There's a lot of little things they left off of here, but if they had added all those little things here and there, this could have easily been a $700 printer. So first off, let's cover this build volume. You're getting 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 400 millimeters tall. That's huge. I printed some massive pieces. This is a giant vase mode print. You could print out very usable trash cans, large planters for this. I'm definitely planning on planting something in this. With this build volume, you would be able to print full-size helmets in one piece. I know that's one of those exciting things I thought about when first getting a 3D printer, but then I never actually got around to it. But when Halloween comes back around, it becomes way more tempting to print out costumes like that all in one piece makes it so easy. It does have silent printing with TMC 2208 stepper motor drivers on the X, Y, and Z motors. The extruder does have a cheaper stepper motor driver on it, but your extruder isn't gonna make near as much noise as the other one. So I love to see that they upgraded some of it, but then still saved a little bit of money on that extruder stepper motor driver. And in the future, if it does bother you, you can just upgrade it yourself. They're fairly easy to change. This touch screen on the front here is a full 4.3 inch resistive touch screen. Resistive touch screens make it a little bit cheaper and means you can use a tool to press the buttons or if you're wearing gloves. And it's big, bright, great menu system. I found it was really easy to navigate through there really easy to get it to do little things for you instead of using the cheaper scroll wheel and LCD option on cheaper printers. So that was a really nice upgrade to see on this printer. The bed is ceramic coated glass and it's easily removable. There's these four clips on the side. You can pop them off and then the bed comes right off, which makes it really easy for in the future if you wanna try a different bed surface. I did use a little bit of glue stick for one corner of a print that kept coming up, but it makes it really easy to use glue stick if you know you can just pop the printer bed off, take it to the sink, run it under some water, and it washes right off. But the ceramic coated glass is really nice. Glass is nice and level, and the ceramic coating holds onto the prints, and then as the print bed cools down, it releases your print. Your first couple prints might stick a little too well. These Sometimes the ceramic coating can grab on too well to prints when they're brand new. But I feel like they quickly break in and then hold just the right amount and then pop off super easily. I really do enjoy these type of print surfaces. Another really nice feature is this upgraded PTFE Bowden tube on here. A lot of cheaper printers will use the cheapest Bowden tube possible and that's a huge problem. You'll see it in your prints. You're not gonna get the quality out of it as you will with a high quality Bowden tube. A large part of your Bowden tube is building up the pressure and correctly getting that pressure to the nozzle. So a high quality Bowden tube is such a cheap, really nice upgrade. I would recommend it for anyone that's running a Bowden tube setup. That's one I'm really glad they splurged to put that nice feature on there. And this printer comes 90% pre-installed. I don't know where they get exactly 90%, but it was a fairly easy install. It basically comes in two parts and you just put those parts together. It took me maybe 30 to 45 minutes because I take my time when putting these together. You really want to make sure everything is nice and square because the better you put it together, the better your prints will come out, the better longevity you're gonna have out of it. You really don't wanna strip out any of these machine screws. You could really damage your printer that way. So. I would say just take your time with it and have fun with it. It's really fun to put this big piece of machinery together and it really wasn't difficult. They have both a really good video guide and a good written guide. I found using both the written guide and the video guide useful because some things were better explained in written form and some things were just better explained in video form. So for testing out the big upgrade here, which is dual part cooling fans, which is really nice to see that there are three entire fans up here. One fan cools the hot end, one cools the left side, one cools the right side. Instead of having a single fan and then some sort of complex fan duct system, which directs it onto two sides of a part, this uses two entirely separate fans, so you will get a lot more airflow onto your part. So to test it, I did a dual Cali cat. This is a little calibration cat, and their tail is at a 45 degree angle. So if you stack them facing opposite directions, the tails will be going in opposite directions. So it needs to have part cooling on both sides to get a good print of this, and it did great. 
both tales came out identical. The part cooling issues seem to be the biggest issue that most reviewers had with this printer, so it's great to see that they created this stock one. It's all metal, it's all enclosed, ready to go, instead of you having to create some sort of custom put together part. This is really great to see and great to see that it works so well. Some other improvements around back, they put this entire strain relief on the heated bed, which is great to see that these wires are no longer dangling here. That can be a huge safety risk that some printers just seem to skim over. And some people created some 3D printed parts to hold this cable straight. But now this part came stock on the bed right from the factory, which is so nice to see that a company like Longer is making safety a priority to keep you safe. So that's something I love to see when companies do that. And around on this side, there's a few other 3D printed parts that they've added onto this printer from reviewers' complaints. One was this cable that runs underneath here and goes to your front touch screen. I saw some reviews where people were saying you should 3D print these little clips to hold the cable up there. And now they come stock from the factory. They, it's just little 3D printed parts that are clipped on under there and keeps the cable managed up and away. It's not gonna get caught or ripped off anywhere. Another little part is a, it's a little part to keep your filament going straight and not rubbing against the lead screw here. I haven't taken the time to install it yet because I think with this filament spool here, it feeds it in there really well and doesn't, for me, it hasn't been rubbing on the lead screw yet. But if you were mounting this filament spool somewhere else and feeding it into here, this might be a really useful part. And now I want to talk about the usability of this printer. And that's a big part of most budget level printers is, is how easy it is to get up and running with it. Luckily, this one has a really good Cura profile or several Cura profiles. You can select different quality settings and I found they work really well straight out of the box and they come with the latest version of Cura. So if you're already using Cura or just download it directly from Ultimaker's website, it'll have these profiles built in, ready to go. The biggest tweak I did add to those profiles is changing it from printing with a raft to printing with just a skirt around. I find this glass bed is good enough. It doesn't really need a raft, but there are some situations you might want one. But you can slice your prints in Cura, offload them to a micro SD card, and they load right here into the side of, the, right on the back side of the printer. You can load in your micro SD card. Nice and easy, that's fairly standard for most printers. Another part of this printer that makes it really easy to use are these really large bed leveling screws. And on the screws, they have the arrow to tell you which way to turn it to make the bed go up, which is really useful, especially for someone new to 3D printing. I know when I was leveling my first 3D printer, I would always turn it the wrong way and then it'd go down when I wanted to go up. But these are big, easy to turn, and that arrow makes a nice visual reminder. With the standard Cura profile, I turned off raft and then printed out this micro 3D printer test. It tests a bunch of little things from bridging to stringing tests and two big overhangs it's gotta manage. It's also a really good test of stringing that it has to move between these two towers and the retraction settings are dialed in really well. It's able to move between them very easily and overhangs look really good all the way up to about 70 degrees of overhang. It's doing really well. So these dual part cooling fans are working wonders, but it's not a perfect printer. There are some downsides and cons to it. The biggest one I think is with the fans and the firmware controlling those fans. Let me turn it on and I think you'll see what I'm talking about. So these fans are always on both the hot end fan and the fan underneath that blows over the control board anytime the printer's turned on. So even though your stepper motor drivers are silent, these two fans will overpower it and are way louder than the printer ever is while actually running. And I feel like that's just a missed opportunity in the firmware. You can set your hot end fan to turn on only when the hot end's over 50 degrees Celsius. That one's fairly common. And I'm pretty sure the same thing can be said for the fan that's blowing over the control board down there. Luckily, it is a fairly constant and steady fan noise sound. So when it's running in the background, you don't hear it changing as it's moving about the print surface. So if you're across the room from it, I kind of forget that it's even printing because you can't hear the stepper motors moving around. You just hear these fans that are always on. So it makes it easy to tune it out in the background, but I think the firmware could be tweaked for those two fans. Another downside to this printer is just something you're gonna get with it being a large printer is there's a lot of weight and a lot of mass when this print bed is moving back and forth. So you're gonna get a good amount of ringing, especially at high speeds. So I ran some tests to see how quickly I could push it. 
and I got a ton of ringing when pushing it above the Cura profiles. So it can go faster, but you're just gonna get some ringing in your prints. So I left it pretty much at stock speeds to not get too much of this ringing in the prints. Now this leads into another big downside of large format 3D printing is how long things take to print. This is a single wall of filament around the outside. So vase mode is gonna be your quickest way to get large prints. And this still took, it was 12 to 18 hours or so for it to print. So if this was a more solid print, it does have a good amount of flex to it. It's not super rigid, but if I wanted two or three walls on the outside, this could take days to print something this large. And similar with large helmet prints, those will take a day or two to print in high quality. But in general, it's just gonna take a while to print large objects like this. Another thing to really think about is the space requirements of having a printer this big. It's really tall, it's really long, because the printer, print bed needs to go all the way out to the front and all the way to the back, plus the cables that are hanging off the back of the printer. I had to put it sideways on the table, sort of like this, which is a fine workaround. I think it works fine going forward and back like this, but it does take up a lot of table space. It's not gonna be a small compact printer. It needs its own pretty large dedicated area for it. So that's just something to keep in mind. You can't put this printer in some spaces where you could put a smaller printer. Another downside to this printer, let me just turn this off. We don't need that fan noise in the background, is that there's no BL Touch. There are mounts for a BL Touch and they say it's BL Touch compatible, but that's one upgrade I would put on there fairly early on because with such a large build surface, it's really hard to get it nice and leveled across a large area like that. A BL Touch will kind of do all that for you. And so it's nice to see these mounting holes. That would be something that would be nice to see as maybe an upgraded option if they would install that there. Or if they went ahead and ran the cables for you, that would be a really nice plus. Because getting a BL Touch isn't all that expensive, but running the cables all the way up through this loom and down in there and plugging it in and installing the firmware, it's way more difficult than just screwing it onto the hot end. I do think it's worth all that effort, but they could have done some things to make it a little easier for you. So overall, I think this is a great printer for a great price and some large things you can print out of here. I do agree with a lot of the ways they cut corners to keep price down. Sure, it could be better in all these little ways they could have upgraded and changed things, but they wouldn't have been able to keep that $350 price point. It's also nice to see it works great right out of the box with the stock profiles. You'll be up and printing very quickly, printing large, successful prints without a bunch of hassle or needing to immediately upgrade things. You can always upgrade things in the future as you run into limitations of this printer, as your skills in 3D printing grows with your machine. Now, I don't think everyone needs a massive printer like this, but if you are in the market for a large format printer in a reasonable price range, I think this is a great option to look at. Well, if you stuck this far through the video, consider hitting that like and subscribe button down below. It really helps me out, helps this channel keep growing, helps companies keep sending me great products like this to review and test out. And I've got a lot of future projects planned now that I have a large format printer like this. But anyway, go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh,